Hi, this is Robert with Northwest Oregon Fishing, and today I'm going to talk about inline fuses. The reason that I'm talking about that is because I'm doing a major project on my boat. I'm doing a rewire and installing lithium ion batteries. So there'll be a few different videos that goes along with that, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about was fuses. I did some research, I wanted to make sure that I was still happy with what I had done, and we want, I wanted to go in that direction. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mention some, um, I'm going to mention breakers to you. Uh, this breaker right here is a well-reviewed breaker and it is, um, I've tested it a couple of times to make sure that it functions properly and it does, but there's a couple of problems with breakers. The first problem is, is that they wear out over time. So the more that they trip, they actually wear down and they will, um, be a, a failure issue in the future. So each time they trip, they'll actually trip sooner. So where it's 60 amp today, tomorrow it's 59 amp, 58 amp, and so on. Um, the nice thing about them is they're easy to use. You reset them just like that. And they also make them in a shape like this if you wanted to have a, a, a straight through pass through. There's two studs right here for the wire to go on. And like I said, you push the button and that's how you test it. And then if you wanted to turn it off for some reason, if you want to not use a battery switch, this might be a good option. But a lot of times you're burying these things. So even to get to them, you almost have to anchor your boat up or um, take it back to the dock so you can tear apart your console or wherever your breaker is located. Um, and you don't want them to be out in the open because they are pretty vulnerable to damage. So I'm just going to set this aside because that's not my preferred method and there's one other reason why and the other reason why is because it's real easy to tell if a fuse is bad um, on most fuses so i'm going to talk about the inline fuses a little bit i do have an article and the link is below um, but i'm just gonna um, go through it a little bit so a inline fuse or a fuse or a breaker is just a means of protection now, people talk about it protecting the, the device, like the motor, and while it does provide some protection to the device, what it's really about is protecting your boat from fire, from burned up wiring or melted wiring or something like that. If your wire goes to ground, the breaker or fuse will trip and the fuse burns up and then you're safe because it disconnects the power. Now, with a lithium battery, there's built-in safety system and a drop-in. When you build your own, you have to make sure that you do that. Um, but that's another uh, story. So um, I have my notes here, which is basically the article. So they will burn up on the inside and just literally melt. And most people are familiar with this. The connection, the metal connection is fused and then it defuses when it overheats and that's what stops the flow of power to the wire. Um, the reason that I like to use the fuses is because you're, you're sure when a fuse is blown, you know that the fuse is blown. A lot of times a visual inspection can easily tell you that. Sometimes there's a little bit more involved with some fuses that, that you can't really see that, and that's um, when you look at your vehicle, you probably have blade fuses in there, and they're hard to tell when they're broken without completely pulling them out and getting a close look at them. It's, you can't see the, um, uh, the connector in the middle. So that's the main reason I choose it is because I'm positive what the problem is. And then it's an easy fix. So you replace it, and then you're back up to 100%. You don't have to worry about the degradation that you do with a, a breaker. So I want to talk about the products that I have. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a picture up of my current batteries and of the fuse and it's in between the batteries and the charger uh, mounted to a piece of wood that's part of the bracketing system for the batteries. And these batteries, the Trojan 1275s are extremely heavy and so they're not going anywhere. A simple strap down is really good and those things, like I said, they're almost 100 pounds each. So. I, can, I can't even lift them out of there. Um, but first thing I want to talk about is one that's similar to those. And I'll show you this. This is called a Windy Nation. And this is a, a blade fuse. or um, They also call this variety an ANL. And 
I'll show you the holder first. And then what you do here is you have this nut and you put the wire underneath the washers, of course. I'm just going to do it like this for convenience. And then you tighten this back down. So then the fuse is here and the wire should be touching the fuse directly. And then you have the washers on top to hold it in place. And you're right there. That's simple. So when the fuse blows, you just loosen that wire and then to loosen this one too. And then the whole thing comes right out. So I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I'll hold that up to the camera. There is the element inside the little window in the fuse there. And uh, I'm gonna actually move over here. Nope, it's not doing it. So I'm trying to get it to refocus on this. Um, but if it doesn't work out in the video, I'll pop a picture right up here. So you can take a look at that while I uh, put this back together and then we can move on to the next fuse. So when you put it back together, you put the fuse in like that and then just slide this in between the washer and normally it'll be the wire terminal. And when it's holding steady, it's actually a lot easier when it's in mounted. And then you're done. So I'll go ahead and remove this wire real quick. So you want to get your fuse holder as close to the battery as possible. Um, American Boat and Yacht Council recommends a seven inches and on larger inboard boats that is the code. On the smaller boats um, there's usually pretty loose enforcement of that kind of stuff and so it's not consistent. Um, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, strive for whatever the code is. So next thing I want to talk to you about is this um, Busman blade fuse. Now this is going to look really familiar to you because this is just a maxi blade. So it's a super large blade, just like the kind that you would have in your car. You probably have two different sizes in your car. You probably have a regular for some fuses and then another block with some minis in them. Um, but this one here, this is large. This fuse they have here is a 60 amp and um, so then you buy the fuse and the holder separately and the holder is rated for a certain amperage. And you know that this is um, convenient and nice to have. Um, they're just easy to do. So there's nothing to assemble, but what you'll do is you'll strip these wires. And if you're going to terminals, you'll just add a ring terminal. If not, you could use butt connectors or another type of connector. Um, I do recommend that if you use anything, that you always put a shrink wrap over the end. And you can see that clearly like in this set of wire here is that I have a, a set of shrink wrap that goes over both of these to cover them to prevent salt water or whatever from getting in there so that way you don't have to worry about corrosion. And these simply pop in there just like any other blade fuse. And a lot of devices also have them like um, some of my battery chargers came with those blade fuses simply just like that and it's really sealed. The, my favorite thing about this, um, because I don't, I don't really care for the fuse as much because you can't tell easily when they're bad. My favorite thing about this is that there is a hole here and you could literally have a battery sitting up in the front of your boat and you could have this hanging out and zip tie this to a part of your boat and it would be safe. You wouldn't have to worry about bumping it. This thing is rock solid. You're not gonna damage this. Um, I mean, you know, don't go hitting it with a hammer. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so then um, I want to talk about this one here. And this one here that I have the um, name for is, uh, it's called an Okini. I, I'm not exactly sure. But um, so the first time I've ever used one of these was installing a car stereo. And you put the wires through the holder and then you put them in here and you use an Allen wrench to tighten the wire down. So there's no terminal connection. You just get it in there and then get it really tightened down and you're done. Um, and then depending on the size of wire, you can use this or you can not use it. But if you put it in a spot where you're not gonna be exposed to the weather, you shouldn't have a problem. 
Um, a trick for you if you're using a wire that'll go through here, a little bit of either um, dish soap like Joy or even regular hand soap. You can put a little uh, bar soap on the wire um, or Vaseline. Um, the last one would be dialytic grease, which would actually be a good one too because it'll help keep corrosion from there and it's not conductive. Um, but I want to show you the fuse that goes on the inside and that fuse is just like a traditional standard fuse. The one thing about this is that you can see, as long as when you put it in there and you position it correctly, you can see this really well. It's probably the easiest one to see whether it's a broken connection or not. And uh, that one right there is a little um, vulnerable to damage. So you do want to put it in a, in a real safe spot, similar to like this one. Also a little vulnerable to damage. So if you kicked it, you'll break the case real easy. So then one of the fuses that is probably newer is the um, terminal fuse. And I'm going to show this to you like this. And this screws onto your battery right here. And then you can screw your accessory right there. You could put in a large one of these and actually fuse the whole system. I don't feel good about that. There's a fuse inside my boat motor. I would rather leave it connected the way that it was originally intended. And uh, see if we can get this loose real quick. Okay, so the lock washer was working a little too well. So this, when it's on, this right here goes directly over top of the stud and that way you have some stud protections for your direct. But this is hot here and your battery is hot. So this is an area where you know not to be playing around, let's be honest. Um, so I'm gonna remove this. And what you would do is you would put that on there with an additional washer and put it down on there like that. And so then I'll go ahead and remove that. So there's the stud terminal. So you put that on the battery right there and then you have your new stud there. And there's an insulator here. You set this down on there and then that's where the connection is completed. And so this little block is the fuse. And it runs through this thing. So this in the middle is an insulator. So the thing about this is they come in many different sizes, all the way up to 300 amp. And this terminal is definitely rated for 300 amps. This is a solid piece of metal. But uh, the one thing is, is that there is a wire in here and I can see it clearly right here, but I don't know how clearly you're gonna be able to see it when you're out in your boat. So I'm not sure about that. It may be, may be just fine. Um, but I'm not positive. This fuse is rated up to 58 volts and it says it right on the fuse. So that way you know where you can go to. Um, but uh, I think that uh, this one, it might be good for a lot of things. I don't know if it's good for everything. Um, the other thing about this is that if you were gonna run two different lines, they make a terminal with two bolts on it. So you could fuse two different lines for two different things. So one could be fused for 60 and the other one could be fused for 20 or even, you know, I don't, I don't know how low they go, but if you're gonna like redistribute to a um, fuse panel, you might do something like that and send 20 up to the fuse panel and then each one your fuse panel have like five amps here, five amps there, depending on your device, like a side uh, scan uh, chart plotter or something like that. So coming back to the end here is that this style is the ones that I use in my boat. I have two of these set up, one for each uh, battery bank. I have the battery bank that I showed you the picture of, and then I have another one that's stowed underneath that's uh, not maintenance free batteries. And um, I have never ever had an issue with these and I just can't help but recommend these the most. And this, these things are, fillet fuses are relatively cheap and you can adjust them to whatever amperage you need. They, I think they step up in five. So why this is a 60, um, it's really easy to find um, 70s, 80s, 90s like that, but you can also find 
65s and 75s. And so if your motor calls for, say, 57 amps, then you're going to need a bigger fuse than a 60 amp. But the more important thing is to make sure that you don't go over your wire. So 10% headroom on the fuse and from the wire from there. So if you motor calls for 60 amps, you need 66 amp fuse and you need a wire that's going to support 66 amps. But if you're running your motor at full speed all the time, you either need a bigger motor or you have a different problem. So anyway, I've covered all that. Um, we're going to be doing some of the wiring and talking about the batteries in the next video. Hopefully we'll be able to get that rolling and also um, I'm switching over to a new charger. While my charger in the picture there was compatible with lithium, it's not optimal and it needs a little bit higher voltage, charge voltage for lithium. The manufacturer and the battery, so the charger manufacturer and the battery manufacturer said I could switch the switch to change it to a two stage and it would work just fine. That's not what I want to do. I want to get the most out of that battery because they are spending. Below we have affiliate links. Uh, for everything that I talked about in this video and the article is linked right at the top of the description If anything there that you buy I will get compensated for so I appreciate it Thank you very much, and I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video with that beast battery